Don't forget to check out the website, guys. Be sure to buy yourself some of my awesome merch to rock up to the car boots in. And also check out the helpful guides and blog posts. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing a few of the pros and cons from shopping at charity shops with the intention to resell. So in this video, I've got three pros and then three cons. Obviously, there are a lot more than that. So if you want to have your say down below and you want to get involved with this, then please do drop some comments down below with some of your thoughts, your extended thoughts on this subject. But I just had this idea uh, the other day. I wanted to do kind of a a little bit of inform informal video, a little bit of a rambly video on this subject and obviously we can all get involved and, and have a discussion down below in the comments section as I mentioned. So with that being said we will start with the pros first and I will get on with the first one. So number one is accessibility. So unlike car boots or auctions where you generally have like a set day, you know maybe it's a Sunday for a car boot, maybe it's Monday, Tuesday for an auction. I know some auctions obviously run at the weekend as well, but generally there's set days for both of those things. You know, Sunday car boots, maybe a midweek car boot, and then obviously an auction on a set day as well, as well as the viewing being on a set day. But with charity shops, there isn't really a set day. So the accessibility is quite high. The opening hours are pretty good from obviously nine to five in most charity shops. And of course they're open. Most of them actually are open, you know, Monday through Saturday and then even some of them are open Sunday as well. So it's almost seven days a week. So the actual accessibility of them in terms of when they're open and when you can actually get down there is very, very high. So that is obviously a huge positive. Um, also the access accessibility in terms of actually getting to them, that's pretty easy as well because most towns, most even, even a few villages, uh, most cities, they all have charity shops. And usually you can go to any town and there's going to be at least a handful of charity shops these days. I mean, my local town has about nine charity shops and then if you just go like 10 minutes down the road there's another town and that has about three or four you go 10 minutes the other way there's another town that has three or four and just dotted all around there's these little towns with loads of charity shops in so again in that respect the accessibility to people is very very high and even if you don't have transport like for example you don't have a car you don't drive you can go on the train to them and generally as, as I say you can go get the train to a town and there'll be some charity shops in that town um, you could maybe hitch a ride with someone or uh, you know a friend or whatever you could um, obviously you could get the bus or something there so even to people who don't have a car or don't drive or anything the accessibility is high over car boots let's say because there aren't really any buses that take you direct to the car boot there aren't really any trains that take you direct to the car boot you might be a little bit better with auctions because obviously an auction house will probably be in a town and then you can get there quite easy if you don't have a car um, but generally charity shops are probably one of the most accessible uh, ways of getting stock for so many people so the second pro is building relationships. Now that might take a few people by surprise, but I chose this one because it's something that I've done over the course of obviously going into charity shops. And you'll know that when you go into a charity shop and you see someone one on the till, maybe it's the manager, maybe it's like a co-manager or something like that, or maybe it is just a volunteer. But when you see someone on the till, it's very, very easy in charity shops just to go up and just have a friendly conversation with them and just build a, a relationship generally with them or friendship generally with them and because of that you know let's say that is the manager or you get talking to a volunteer and then they introduce you to the manager it's very very easy to build a sustainable relationship with that person because they're probably not going anywhere they're probably going to be there you know in terms of employed by that charity shop for a few years maybe at minimum something like six months or a year or something like that so you can build that relationship and then you can get if you know you if if you get uh, get up the kind of gum to tell them what you do and tell them that you're an eBay reseller or an Amazon reseller um, and then say, look, you know, I'm more than happy to take things off your hands. Um, you know, I've, I've got cash available every week. I can come in and I can I can hopefully help you hit your targets as well in terms of the targets that the managers have 
in the charity shop. So when you do that and you can get that level of connection and then what happens is you can get this sustainability. You can get a sustained level of stock from those charity shops each week. Now I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, well, it doesn't always work like that because you know some charity shops just don't have the stuff in it. Even if you go in the back, sometimes just some weeks or some days they just don't have the stuff in even if you've got those connections with managers. But this is why you could do it with a few different charity shops. So you you know, you know the managers from three, four, five, ideally maybe even 10, 15 or 20 and then you just literally go around you know, maybe once a week and say, and go into the chat shops, spark up a conversation, you know, be quite friendly with them, ask them how they're doing etc but also then you can just say to them you know is there anything in today and then if there's not in that chat shop you go into the next one that you know the manager in there and then you could just go to about five, ten chat shops collecting whatever you can that they've got for you. Um, now of course you know this kind of takes someone who is um, sort of very social, you know, this kind of takes quite a social person to be able to do that. Um, and me having like anxiety myself, and I know a lot of people have social anxiety disorders and stuff like that, it can be quite hard, but I would encourage you just to try and, and, and make those connections because it will really, really help you in your business. I know it's helped me massively in my business. Once I got the courage to talk, just talk to people more in the charity shops, not only did it help me with my anxiety, but of course it helped me with my business. And there's been many times on, on videos that I've, that I've said, oh, I got this from this charity shop manager who keeps things back for me. And uh, you know, you can just see in the videos that it's helped me massively with, with actually getting that stock. So number to is you know the ease of building relationships and also I would go on to say that you know with auctions and stuff like that and even maybe car boots can be a little bit harder to create sustainable relationships for one because at auction houses you might not see the auctioneer other than you know when they're when we've got the gavel in the hand and, and, and actually selling the lots and then at car boots generally you've got a lot of family sellers they're only going to be there a couple of times a year um, but you're not going to really be able to create like a, a sustainable relationship in where you can get a lot of stock from however I would say in the case of car boots a great um, thing to obviously build a relationship is with the house clearance guys that is a good way to obviously uh, do these kind of sustainable relationships at car boots but certainly the charity shops um, in terms of making a sustainable uh, relationship that can obviously provide you with stock week in week out that is a really really big pro of them so pro number three is that you are at less risk of buying faulty items from charity shops so when you're at the car boot sometimes people can kind of extend the truth a little bit not necessarily outright lie but they may have said you know you may ask if something is tested and is working let's say it's a VHS player or a DVD player uh, you may ask that and they may have tested it but it might have been a very very rudimentary test and it might have been two months ago opposed to last night or a couple of days ago just before they brought it to the car boot and then you get it home and it's not working in the way it's should etc of course if we go to auction houses a lot of auction houses just don't test for electronics and they are sold as such as untested and obviously that means that you're more risk of buying a faulty item but at charity shops generally they will at least pat test their items now this isn't a full test this isn't a uh, you know a full test of all the different functions on something however it is a basic test but at least lets you know the unit will power on um, and also in the case of board games and stuff like that generally some charity shops will check to see if board games are complete and then put a complete sticker on now of course this doesn't mean that people aren't going to make mistakes in charity shops or they're going to cut corners and some of the board games may be incomplete when you get them home or some of the the units might not work etc however with charity shops as well you've got the added luxury of having a receipt and then you know let's say a unit was tested and stuff and it was advertised that it was at least going to be powered on and stuff and it doesn't do that or, or nothing's really working on the unit then you can obviously just take it back in a, in a certain window of time uh, when you've got that receipt and then just say look this doesn't work etc and then and then get your money back if you'd like to do that so you've got that kind of added luxury as well so you're really limiting your kind of risk with buying these electronics or these board games from charity shops opposed to things like car boots or auctions of course I don't think I've not actually looked into this, but I'm pretty sure I just knew this anyway. I don't think you're allowed to take anything back to an auction. I don't think that's even an option. I've never even thought about that actually until that moment then when I just thought then. 
But um, no, I don't think you're actually allowed to take anything back to auctions. Once you've bought it, that's it. So uh, at least I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'd have, to, I'd have to look into that more, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And also at car boots, once you've, you know, drove off or whatever, you might not ever see that person again. Um, so, you know, they could say to you, oh, yeah, it's working or whatever, and it might not be working, and, and, and that's that. You can't really do anything because it's probably just a family seller. They probably only go to that car boot once or twice a year, and you're probably not going to see them. So... Um, you know, you've not got the added luxury at car boots or auction houses to just go back and, and say, yeah, you know, look, I, I want my money back or whatever. So, uh, yeah, so charity shops, that's probably pretty much the biggest uh, pro of charity shops. Uh, it's a lot more uh, risk-free in terms of your buying um, than maybe some of the other areas are. But that being said, you know, car boots, you're going to get things for cheaper. Auctions, you're going to get things for cheaper. So that's a, that's a pro of those things as well, really, opposed to charity shops where you may be paying a little bit more anyway. So anyway, that is all the pros, and I will now get on with the cons. So now we are going to get on with the cons of shopping at charity shops to resell. So basically the first one I'm going to discuss, of course, is going to be pricing. I can't not discuss this one. So this is probably the biggest negative for resellers. So this is from a reseller's opinion. It's not from a charity shop's opinion. It's not from uh, just an average buyer of a charity shop. This is from a reseller's opinion. So it is going to be biased. However, um, in terms of it being a negative pricing, in terms of the last few years, prices have gone up in charity shops. A lot of charity shop managers are getting quite savvy with eBay and they, you know, see something on eBay that they've got in the back of a charity shop. They see it that it's on eBay for £30. And, you know, some charity shop managers might just match that price and put it in the window at £30. Other charity shop managers might say, well, you know what, I, I, I don't have a worldwide audience like eBay does, but, you know, I still think I, I could get £15 or £20 for this item in the charity shop, so that's what I'm going to put it in there at. And, of course, that massively harms us as resellers because we can't make that sort of margin. And some, resell, uh, some uh, charity shops may think that, oh, if they put it in there for £15, they're still catering towards resellers because they're thinking, oh, well, they can at least double their money, so that's a good enough margin, etc. But we know as resellers that that isn't a good enough margin to sustain a business because not only do out of that, it's not even really double your money because after eBay fees, PayPal fees, all the rest of it, all the hidden costs, etc., you're not, you're not making double your money. But you know, with, with all these extra costs involved in running a business and your, your own time that is put into it, that's that's not at all the margin we need. Now, of course, I'm not saying that I expect charity shop managers to cater for us as resellers all the time. That is not why charity shops exist. Charity shops exist to help the causes that are behind them, of course. Um, they exist to give people a good deal, just the average person a good deal, maybe someone who actually can't afford uh, things at, high, at, the, at the resale prices, um, but they can afford them in the charity shop. So not only is this kind of rise in price uh, negative for resellers, but it's also negative for the average buyer at charity shops because they're going in expecting to get maybe, you know, I don't know, a little top for if they go out to dinner or something. I don't, I don't know what it might be, but we get a little top or we get a nice jumper or we get a nice shirt, expecting to pay three or four pounds for it. And they're now paying ten pound, what you know, six pound, seven pound, eight pound, nine pound, ten pound, whatever it may be. And then obviously if they want a designer label, a lot of charity shops are now charging the same as eBay prices or just a little bit less. And then it kind of makes the whole philosophy of charity shops moot because it's you know it's like it's gone there's no kind of um there's none of that bargain element anymore it's just uh, basically an ebay shop it's basically a physical ebay shop so the pricing is a huge negative and also uh, some charity shops what they do is they Basically, when the stuff comes in, they sort the stuff into an eBay box and then that'll just get shipped off to an eBay facility, whether it be like an Age UK one, a Bernardo's one, whatever. And then they will have a person just like me, you know, just like a, an experienced reseller or whatever, but they actually work for the charity. They have a person who does loads and loads of photos, lists a load of items on eBay. Generally, they'll do auction or sometimes they'll do buy it now, but I know a lot of charity shops do auction and then they'll just clear it that way. And we don't even 
even see the stuff or even not even just us as resellers but not even the average people who are looking for bargains in chat shops they don't even find it anymore because it just gets sold on eBay at retail price or maybe just a little bit under so um, yeah pricing is a big one it's a big negative uh, it hits resellers hard it hits the av average shoppers hard and the more and more charity shops put prices up the less and less buyers they're going to have and that will make it really really bad for charity shops and you may see as I've seen over the last few weeks, last few months, when I've been to different towns, I've seen actually a few charity shops have been closed down, you know, just dropped off. And I do feel that in part it's due to charity shops removing themselves from their base or their core philosophy of a place where people can get bargains and people can get, you know, decent items at a decent price where they may not be able to pay, pay the full retail price for. So it is kind of one of those things, but... I'm not going to ramble any more on that because I've probably just like um, literally, uh, oh, what's the word? I probably repeated myself about three times there. But certainly the pricing in charity shops, I feel it needs to be addressed um, by the charity shop managers. I feel they need to get back to their core philosophy of, of this kind of philosophy of people getting a bargain from them again. Not for the resellers necessarily. I mean, of course, I would like that. But also for the average everyday shopper that, that now can no longer get that or, or it's a little bit harder to get that. Um, so yeah, anyway, that is the pricing and now we will get on with the next one. So the other negative, and it's kind of a negative, it kind of isn't a negative, but it's the volume of stock you can pick up. Now generally, at charity shops, you're not going to be able to get that much volume of stock. If you do you know, have quite a few managers that hold the back for you or that you're very, very friendly with and they let you in the back, then you might be able to get a fair bit of volume. I mean, I've done that before. I've been able to get a fair bit of volume in one, one uh, visit. But generally, you know, if you're just going in for a few charity shops, you're just having a quick look around, you're not going to be able to pick up that much volume of stuff, opposed to things like auctions and car boots, like I've mentioned in this video. So, you know, car boots, you're going to get a lot more. You might be able to get a car full quite easily. Auctions, again, very, very easy to get a car full. If you really know what you're doing and you've got a lot of cash in your pocket, you can quite happily get a van full. Uh, not, you know, no trouble at all, really, if you if, if it is a decent auction auction you know that you're going to um so yeah with those things you can get a lot more stock to get a car full of stuff charity shopping you're probably going to have to go to quite a few charity shops and you're probably going to have to make a full day of it to get you know that that amount of stuff so obviously you're spending a lot more time around the charity shops and uh, you maybe not be able to pick up as much as you could from the car boots or, or um, auctions. So that's definitely a big one. The actual volume of stock is, is going to be lesser compared to those other ways of sourcing. And then uh, the last one is actually relating to what I've just said in uh, number two there. And that is the actual time and energy it takes you to go to enough charity shops, to actually go round to, to enough of them on you know, what on, on a single day, let's say, um, it's, it, you're going to have to go around a lot of them. It's going to take a lot of time. You, I mean, if you want to get a, a good amount of stock, like I just mentioned, you're probably going to have to go to 30 or 40 charity shops in a day. And that's with, you know, a, a good amount of items that you're looking for, a good amount of items that you want to pick up. Now, yes, there are circumstances where on one day you might just do really well and you might only have, have to go around like five charity shops and you might have got quite a lot of stuff. But then there's other days that, you know, things just aren't quite there and 30 or 40 charity shops might be needed to get a really good volume of stuff. And, and of course, if you're doing 30 or 40 charity shops in a day, that is a, pretty much the best part of the day gone. I know this because I did 50 charity shops in a day. I'll put a link up there to the video. Um, but yeah, and that took me nine, like eight or nine hours. Like it was a full day. So doing 30 or 40, you're going to be spending like best part of six hours doing that. Um, and, you know, there is a chance you might not get that much stock either. Um, and all that time and energy, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of time and a lot of energy that you're using to go around those charity shops and on that specific day, you might not get any listing done, you might not get any uh, packaging done or anything like that because you're just going to be physically exhausted from walking around so many charity shops and carrying the bags and, and all the rest of it. So yeah, actually the time and energy it takes to get enough stock from charity shops, 
that is another negative really for them. Um, but with, with that being said, I think I've covered pretty much everything there. I probably rambled a little bit. I hope this video wasn't too long. Um, yeah, I will leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any thoughts on this, then please drop them down below. As always, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. If you liked the video, give it a good thumbs up. And also check out any of the links down below in the description, the website, the merch, all that sort of stuff. You know what to do. And I will see you in the next one. So I'll see you very soon, guys.